Hey all, Eric Christensen here, pharmacist. Welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. On this episode, I am going to cover the drug ezetimibe, which is primarily used for cholesterol-lowering effects. Uh, the brand name of this medication is Zetia. It is uh, dosed 10 milligrams once a day, and there really isn't much variation on the, the dosing there in the majority of patients. It's pretty standard. It's a starting dose as well as the uh, treatment or therapeutic dose. Now, the mechanism of action of this drug, how it ultimately lowers cholesterol, is the simplified version is it inhibits the intestinal absorption of cholesterol. So if you block it from getting into the bloodstream, ultimately that's going to lower total cholesterol throughout the, the body and the blood, obviously. Now, the exact mechanism, it blocks the neiman pick c C1-like-1 sterile transporter. Okay, so that's a, a mouthful to remember. Um, but ultimately, this transporter allows uh, cholesterol or facilitates the movement of cholesterol across the intestinal wall and into the bloodstream. So by blocking that transporter, we lower cholesterol. So the primary use, talking about lowering cholesterol, getting into that a little bit further, um, we're targeting LDL cholesterol is typically uh, what we're going to do with this medication. Now, the major, major first-line medication that everyone uses in lowering cholesterol or LDL, or that targeting that LDL cholesterol, reducing the risk of heart attack, stroke, um, ASCVD, and things like that, uh, that's going to be statins. That's the, the first-line go-to medication. Now, if you've got patients that uh, do not tolerate statins, do not get enough efficacy uh, from statins, here's where azetamide may be added in. And recently, I believe late 2018, we had some, maybe it was early 2019, but anyway, recently, uh, within the last six months or a year of, of this podcast, we've had some cholesterol updates. And it was kind of ambiguous when you should use ezetimibe prior to these guidelines. Uh, but now it's getting a little bit more specific and we've got a little bit better guidance from the guidelines as to when to use these drugs. And primarily where you're going to see these used are, again, in those patients that maybe uh, didn't tolerate a statin, they absolutely will not take a statin, uh, whatever the case may be, uh, who we need cholesterol-lowering therapy. Another situation, and probably the more common situation, is patients who are on a statin and they cannot uh, get to their target LDL goals. Because that's one of the things that these cholesterol guidelines kind of brought back was this idea of treating to a target LDL. And so in many patients, if we're still in higher-risk patients that have had a heart attack, uh, something of that nature in the past, or have clinical ASCVD, and they're at high risk. They're smokers, obese, diabetes, things like that, high blood pressure. Those higher risk patients may have a low uh, target LDL of 70, and maybe their high dose rosuvastatin, high dose atorvastatin doesn't quite get them to that goal. You'll likely see ezetimibe added on to that therapy. So one of the big reasons statins are first line is their cholesterol lowering effect and their evidence for reducing cardiovascular events is much, much greater than it is for ezetimibe. However, ezetimibe does have some uh, evidence for its LDL lowering effects and some potential um, clinical benefits as well there. Uh, with that said, ezetimibe is not nearly as potent as the statin medications are, particularly higher intensity statins like atorvastatin or rosuvastatin. Ezetimibe probably will get you, don't quote me on these numbers, probably will get you in the ballpark of a 10 to 20, 20, maybe up to 25% reduction in LDL. Again, kind of depends upon the patient a little bit. You know, if they're trying to work to change diet things and stuff like that, it, it may obviously um, fluctuate those numbers as well. But 10 to 25%, that's not a, a massive, massive reduction um, compared to some of uh, the higher intensity statins, which can be 50%, um, maybe even above that. 
uh, in certain situations. So, um, yeah, not as great of, of a cholesterol lowering, LDL lowering effect as the statin medications, but uh, obviously through the guidelines uh, is now indicated as uh, add-on therapy. Adverse effects uh, with ezetimibe, honestly, in clinical practice, I have not seen uh, many patients really struggle with adverse effects, um, but there there are some that are uh, lower percentages that have been uh, recognized in, in clinical trials. So uh, keep an eye out for GI uh, adverse effects, um, maybe more prominent than, you know, like nausea or vomiting. Uh, you might see a little bit of diarrhea. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. If we're going to use these medications in combinations with statins, there's two things I look out for, uh, muscle pain, myopathy, and muscle soreness. Uh, not, again, very common at all with the Zetamide, but um, something that has been reported anyway. Um, also, rarely you may see some liver uh, function fluctuations. Uh, so that is something that I you know, think about on the, the lower end of things as well. So a couple of things there with adverse effect profile, but again, overall, um, very, very uh, well tolerated as far as a low risk uh, of an incidence of adverse effects. Let's take a quick break from our sponsor and then we'll get into drug interactions. If you're looking for clinical resources on medication pearls and education, uh, meded101.com slash store is a great place to do that. Uh, we've got books on Amazon. We've also got um, audio books available through Audible. Uh, links to getting those books um, right on the uh, webpage meded101.com slash store. Go check that out. Support the sponsor. And of course, we also have uh, all those testing supplies to help you pass your NAPLEX, uh, BCPS, BCACP, and BCGP uh, as well. So go look around, see what we've got there, and uh, take the time to support our sponsor. It's greatly appreciated. Finishing up on drug interactions, there isn't a great deal of drug interactions that I, I worry about with azetamibe. Um, one particular one, I guess, that I, I maybe would get a little bit concerned about is a patient uh, who has had a transplant and is on the medication cyclosporin. Again, if, if I've got a transplant patient, um, anytime a new medication is added, I definitely think about drug interactions. You know, cyclosporin, tacrolimus, they have a lot of drug interactions. And I'm typically going to go and run a drug interaction screen, uh, something uh, to that effect, if I see a new medication is added on uh, to a transplant patient's medication list. Because so, so important. I can't emphasize that enough, um, that we not alter those levels of uh, those um immunosuppressive agents uh, that are used to prevent um, transplant rejection. A couple other medications I think of, I kind of mentioned the statins and, you know, maybe a little bit higher risk of liver fluctuations and myopathy. Uh, so that is something I think about when adding ezetimibe um, onto uh, the use of a statin type medication. Also, uh, I do think of another cholesterol medication, cholestyramine, or the bioelastic sequestrins. Um, I guess cholestyramine, probably you're going to see it used more often uh, in practice for uh, symptomatic diarrhea that we didn't, really don't have an explanation for. Um, you may see that used to help with uh, some of those diarrhea symptoms. But anyway, this drug can uh, block the absorption of that azetamibe and ultimately lead to lower concentrations, which is going to lead to a reduced uh, LDL lowering effect potentially. So those are a few uh, medication interactions I think of. Again, very um, infrequently uh, does this drug have medication interactions, so that is a really nice uh, advantage to the, the medication there. Uh, but we always need to uh, make sure we're assessing our patients and identifying what drugs could potentially um, interact in their medication regimen. So I think that's going to sum it up for today. Uh, go snag that free resource if you're a student or a pharmacist uh, studying for board exams, a free top 200 study guide. 
Also, that allows you to subscribe uh, to the podcast and you'll get an email alert when we've got a new uh, episode available for your learning pleasure. Also, support our sponsor, meded101.com slash store. It's greatly appreciative to, to all that all of you that have done that already. And um, if you love the podcast, please share it. Uh, definitely helps us grow the audience. Leave a rating review on iTunes. Uh, email it to the colleagues, classmates, friends. Uh, help them uh, enjoy and, and hopefully benefit um, from the education and, and information that's provided on this podcast. You can find me at reallifepharmacology.com. Hit the contact button. Uh, emails will go directly to me there. Uh, you can also find me on uh, LinkedIn. We've also got MedEd 101 Facebook page. You can track us down there as well. I'll sign off for today. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great rest of your day.